Hey everybody, how y'all doing today? My name is Tay, and welcome back to my channel, Inspire Me, where I talk about current or relatable topics, all from a godly perspective, and today's topic is called Open Door Policy. An Open Door Policy is a communication policy in which a manager, CEO, MD, president, or supervisor leaves their office door open. It doesn't necessarily mean, like, it's actually open. It could be shut, but they give you the liberty to pretty much come to them, you know, free freely and tell them how you feel, communicate with them in order to encourage openness and transparency with the uh, with the employees of that company. Cuz you know, sometimes some supervisors so suggest some people make it feel like it's just hard for you to talk to them because they might lash out or they might be like, "Well, oh, I don't want to hear that" or they might feel like they're just upper than you and you just you're not qualified to talk to them or tell them how you feel, but that's pretty much the door, open door policy. It can even be the president. They give you that liberty to pretty much talk to them. And it says not just them, it's transparency with the employees of that company. The reason why I want to say this is because this message is for, of course, you know, we can talk to God, of course, we know that as, as sons of God, but this pretty message is pretty much aimed toward that's not of God. And they probably inquiring about, okay, let me come to God or let me talk to him. I need to talk to him regarding a question or if they want to be saved or even if they just want to talk to him. Like, God gives you an open door policy. He gives you transparency. You can come to God and tell him how you feel. It doesn't matter if it's something that... Some people might frown upon, like, oh, my gosh, you really send this to God? Like, God gives you the liberty. Now, don't get that confused with you can come to God and just be disrespectful and say what you want to say. I'm going to just say, for instance, don't think that you can come to God and say, oh, my homie, my n like that. No, you got to respect him. Would you say that to a CEO? Would you say that to your supervisor? No, because you know you're going to be. Out of a job. Yeah, you won't come at them like that. So, what makes you think you can come at God like that? Say, for instance, you, you praying to him. You probably ain't say something that's politically correct or Pharisees or Sadducees, something like they might say. Or somebody that's uh more, like, fluent. You know how somebody say fluent in English? <laughs> like they knew English for a long time or they probably born English. Okay, somebody that's fluent in Christianity, like they've been a Christian for a very long time. You probably don't know how to pray like them. And God's not going to say, oh, no, you got to take that back. You got to start this prayer back over because you ain't quote this right. No, he's not going to say nothing like that. Like, if you talking slang or if you said something wrong with talk country or he, he don't care about none of that. Like I said, as long as you're not disrespecting him, then God gives you the open open door policy. You can be transparent with him. And also, too, like I say, the definition is transparency with the employees of the company. Okay, but like I told you, that was, ref was referring to um, people that's not of God. But this part is referring to people that is of God. Say, for instance, if you want to come to God, you can be also transparent with other Christians, with other followers of Christ. If you don't like how you feel regarding something or... If they're doing something that's out of line, and I'm not so much judging, and you're pretty much, pretty much doing the exact same thing, you got your own sin, but I'm just saying, like, you're righteous, and you see something like another daughter or son of Christ doing something that's wrong, you should be free to have the open door policy. Like, you should be able to be open and transparent to them without them being offended. That's one thing we actually learned. Well, actually, it's a series in church Bible study. It's called the um, Bait of Satan. But it's pretty much saying how being offended is one way that the enemy tries to trap us. And it's pretty much talking about being offended with, uh, you know, a loved one or somebody that's close to you. And like I told you in so many videos, like, it's not so much uh, people who I don't know, but it's people that I do know that, you know, offends me. So and Bible study is good for me so I can overcome that because... I don't need no bait from the enemy. You know, it's feel free to talk to God. Tell him how you feel. Also, too, this reminds me of a movie that's kind of old called Dangerous Minds. I know a lot of us have seen it. Okay, um, I forgot the the boy name. Kind of close to the end of the movie, his um, he was like known as a tough boy. Like 
you want to fight then i'm gonna fight too like he wasn't a scary type but these group of dudes i think they were trying to hit on his girlfriend like i said i didn't see this movie in so long so i could be having it some of it kind of messed up or, and i think he um protected her and he came at them like okay so them set them to squash it and leave it alone like oh okay this you they had beef with the dude it could have been in a gang or something i don't know so that was pretty much out to get him that day since it happened. Lo and behold, it wasn't long after he went to his teacher house. I think he stayed the night over there um, because his teacher was like, she was really cool. And um, he told her, I think, what the issue was. So she pretty much told him to stay at her house. He stayed the night and I think he was supposed to like stay the next day, like the following day. Until she wake up or they go together to the school. I don't know. But lo and behold, he woke up before her and he went to the school. So when she woke up, she was like looking around for the, the, the student and he already left. When she went to the school, she went to the office and, and asked the principal, did you see such and such? And he was like, oh, yeah, he um just bust into my office and I made him leave. And she was like what you you made him leave because he busts in your office because he didn't knock because he ain't knock <laughs> Jeez. lo and behold later on she got a message while she was teaching her because everybody was concerned they do because he didn't show up to class when she got a message those guys i guess when um the principal sent him home because he didn't so-called knock on his door um when he was walking back to the teacher's house those guys saw him and they took him out. And it pretty much just brings me to mind, like, with the open door policy. Now, if the principal would have just let him know, I understand if somebody just come bust inside your door and they not knock it, you might get kind of like, okay, yeah, I'm going to need you to go back out. However, if you look at it, okay, say for instance, if you're a new neighbor in town or something or somebody probably want to borrow some sugar or something like that or just if you have a um somebody visiting of course they're gonna knock nicely and then wait for somebody to open the door up to them you, there's no rush or no concern or urgency or anything like that however if a person is getting abused or they probably have a big emergency like something's happening to the next house next door i don't know of course you're not gonna come to the do the next door and knock on nice and not not knocking no you're gonna bang that door down and pray to god somebody open that door so you gotta know the difference between urgency and if somebody just doing it just to be rude so that's what the principal should have know like okay if he just busts in my office then let, let's see what why he just did that like what's going on like don't just take it as oh he he just a rude kid he's a bad kid because he did have a um to be like a bad boy or whatever but you still should have seen what why he busts into your office so i mean god offers his open door policy he's not saying oh you can't come to his throne because you can't come to his throne of grace that's why he have the open door policy pray to him talk to him tell him how you feel like he's not gonna turn you around and say oh you ain't pray right so you, you gotta go walk at my door you, you gotta leave you can't pray to me no god's not like that just remember that when you want to come to him and i'm not talking about just come to him because you want oh this heartbreak to go away or you won't God to bless you with a lot of money. Because I know, because I used to be the person like, just come to God just because I wanted, you know, relief, temporary relief or something, you know. But come to God. He wants you to come to Him about anything, but come to Him saying that you really want to change. I wanted to say this. You see how on the movie, a buddy, cause like I said, he could have been an old person and said, Man, I'm going to handle this my way. But no, he tried to handle it the right way. And you see how. If, you go to somebody else for help or you, you take another avenue to try to get help or try to do things the right way. How sometimes it could turn around and backfire. And it's like, oh, why well, even did this? So I should have said this my own way. I'm going to say, for instance, say, for instance, if a person, a child, God forbid, has got abused or something like that with their 
biological parents and it's like sometimes in those cases they might put them in a foster home now if they was put in a foster home you know a lot of times those kids are still abused probably sometimes even more than when they even got from their their biological parents and it's like if if you're gonna remove me from being abused out of my um biological parents at least if you're gonna move um a foster home at least make sure i be you know careful or treat it right in a sense like you remove from one toxic situation to the next that's why we we all got to get it right sons of god i would say people in the world but when you have a spirit on you or spirits on you it's not that easy that's why we got to sit sit and pray and fast for them for their soul to come into the kingdom of god and that you know satan no longer tries to bait us because he tries to bait us so we gotta bait him and how we bait him by giving our life to God because he don't like that. So yeah, that's pretty much all I had to say regarding that. Make sure you like, make sure you share, and also make sure you subscribe to my channel, y'all. Y'all have a blessed day.